Hello and welcome to Dimsy's Domain. Now this is my Dragon Ball Super episode 62 raw review. Now what a strong episode. A lot of things happened in this episode. Now the first half I was really happy because the pacing was really well done. It starts off with Trunks with his new form. Firstly there was no explanation at all to how Trunks achieved or how strong this form truly is in comparison to others but we just know that it's very very strong. So Trunks, although being strong, he's still been overwhelmed by both Zamasu and Goku Black. But he does seem to hold his own against at least one of them, at least Goku Black. His pupils return, which kind of shows that he's gaining more consciousness and he's more aware of his surroundings. And he tells Vegeta and Ko to, to go back. Vegeta turns Super Saiyan Blue during a time when Trunks seemed to have the upper hand. But then... But then the double team between Goku Black and Zamasu is so well done and executed that it is almost unfathomable how they're going to get beaten because they seem to have each other's back as they are the same person. They eliminate and dispose of Vegeta so swiftly as I think one of them kicks a midriff whilst the other one slaps the back of his head etc. Bang, he's back in his base form. A few key spots here, we see Trunks using the Masenko again as well as Goku Black and Zamasu with this new somewhat signature move where they converge both of their key blasts. First they shoot a key blast and they converge as it spirals into one giant key blast. So that seems to be like a new signature move. They're forced to go back and Vegeta gives Mai the sensor beans to look after Trunks and that's the last time we see Trunks' little fight with Black and Zamasu which is kind of a shame as all I was thinking about during the dialogue and the conversations which are still really good later on in the episode is how is Trunks faring? How is he, how is he fighting them? But it seems like in the next episode we're going to see more focus on that regard. And as stated earlier, I do like how the first half was very well paced. There was, it felt like no time was wasted. And this episode, we saw a lot of characters converging back to that midpoint of everyone is becoming aware. And who is everyone in particular? I'm, I am trying to focus on Chi Chi and Gohan because Chi Chi and Gohan are back in the fray. Chi Chi is wondering where the hell is Goku. She's dragged Gohan with her and she sees Go, Goten and Trunks flying. And this is when they've returned back in the back in the present the time machine and trunks if kid trunks has been waiting it looks like all that time with pilaf and crew for them to return and seeing them all battered up again he's getting more and more angry there's a lot of character development and focus on kid trunks mentality we see how he he's getting so angry at boomer how he gets golden i think they want to go back he's really really feeling it because I believe he's trying to identify the struggles with his future self, especially after that heart to heart he had with his future self. So there was a little comedy in this section where they were trying to hold and um, keep it away from Chi Chi, trying to make her keep her oblivious. But it was a little bit silly thinking about it. What's the point of keeping it in the dark? Shouldn't wouldn't you want to let her know? And they do let her know uh, in in very good comedic fashion where Shu comes and says, look, uh, Boma, the time machine's ready. And then you see Goku with the little hole there and they're speaking. So when they all go and Piccolo and Krillin join the fray. Before that, Chi Chi was asking Krillin, where's Goku? Whilst he was in patrol and Krillin <laughs> ran off. But they're back at Capital Corp when everyone is meeting and... And they're, they're discussing how are they going to do things. Now, initially, I was thinking, okay, hurry up. get Give that sense of seriousness. Now, for a short while, it they did get there. But for a short while, it was a bit, I'm like, listen, you, you don't have time to be happy. Trunks is risking his life for who knows how long to to maintain to maintain the future, to try and save his world. They did a really good job to show Trunks' resolve. And it, was, it, it came across very well. Especially the way Black ridiculed him, saying that how how are you gonna save the world? He found it hilarious that Trunks is gonna abs is gonna beat him. So as stated earlier, the sense of urgency took its time, but it came um it came across very well. Especially Chi Chi being a bit given an appropriate response when she found out that herself as well as Goten was murdered in the future, and then she pinches Goten's cheek, and of course she's gonna wanna hold him even more closer because he is the youngest kid. But the main focus was, you see, Gohan's face slowly, slowly warp into confusion, anger, and in my opinion, disgust. Disgust with himself how he couldn't really clock on it. He couldn't notice how Future Trunks was here. What, something must be wrong. He was so oblivious, so so engrossed in his own lifestyle to, to notice the struggles Future Trunks is going through. Especially when Goku was telling everyone the anger that came across his face. Is this another tease? Is this another means to an end where nothing's gonna happen are they teasing us for no reason i don't know i don't know i do think 
I, I personally believe that Gohan will come to prominence in the Omniversal Tournament. It seems that Vegeta is going to go to the Room of Spirit and Time and train, which is going to justify how he needs to be stronger because he has been the weakest link amongst the trio, well, trio so far between Goku, Vegeta, as well as Future Trunks. Now, Piccolo says, look, there's a technique to beat him. And from the spoilers, we've been exposed to a, little, a few, you know, days or a week or so earlier, the Mafubas returning. And they they did a nice job to reanimate the scene from Dragon Ball with uh, Muten Roshi, Master Roshi, using the Mafuba on Piccolo Daimao. And then it was a bit weird when Pilaf and them were like, Piccolo Daimao? If you're going to keep them very oblivious and hide their identity, why would they react? It seems that Dragon Ball Super and D3DBZ as well as D3 and Ryo Turu done a video talking about are the Pilaf crew completely new characters? Are they are they revamping them? Are they rewriting their characters in general? But having them react to Piccolo Daimao's name in the fashion they did, I do want them to reveal sooner or later that, hey, we're kind of old and they might probably not they might explain why they're actually young so one thing i did notice was the angles that they used the slanted angles during dialogue gave it a very distinctive eerie uncomfortable feeling similar to steins gate and i really liked it of course nowhere near the same as steins gate due to the sense of seriousness is completely different between these two shows and just just the way the way this was my favorite part and i didn't expect it when he went back to roshi to learn the mafuba and roshi's like okay cool they spent the whole night training and the the first of the music was happy go lucky but mysterious at the same time i can't describe it you need to check it out but the training sequence was was gold this is the type of comedy which i absolutely adore and dragon ball does it the best more than anything the way he was training to do the mafuba on turtle and turtle is flung all the way miles and at such a high speed through the sea and then he catches him and they keep on trying again and again and again and then finally it seems like he learned it now talking about beerus and we so they were still there when they came back with the time machine and appropriately so boomer rages saying listen what you said was an absolute lie and beerus was trying to distance himself from the statements he said earlier saying that oh um yeah maybe if, um future trunks is stay seem true but then he's distanced himself saying that listen uh, i i took care of my timeline i took care of the zamasu in my timeline so my business is done and you see the sense of guilt but also the sense of rage from boomer and co and vegeta has to hold her back before she punches him excellently done the mother's rage the mother's anger for her future son it's really weird if you think of it like that and then we see Beerus and Whis on in universe 10 in the Kaishin room as they're speaking to Gowasu and Gowasu says that he'll take responsibility for the whole mess since he was the idiot who selected Zamasu to be the next Kaishin but then Beerus is is engrossed in thought and he doesn't know what to do because he says that he, apparently, apparently, air quotes, that he can take care. He could easily take down future Zamasu, but because he's a god, he can't break the taboo of time traveling. So is there like some sort of tag on them where as soon as he time travels, bang, Zeno is going to come and say, Oi, you've, you, you're not doing a job and then eradicates him. Is that the reason? I don't know. So what Beerus is going to do, what the plan is, I do I really don't know and I can't think of anything so anyway guys this has been my my little review and I do think that this episode was a strong episode a lot of things happen a lot of different things happen you know what people can make an argument that this was actually one of the best episodes due to the fact that many things happen but the action was good but it wasn't amazing and I was so wanting to see more of Trunks' fight and an explanation of Trunks. If they're going to have a lot of dialogue in this episode, why not kind of explain Trunks's give a little snippet at, oh, he's he seems to have harnessed the power and essence of Super Saiyan Blue, but they didn't do nothing of the sort. Nonetheless, it was a very well-paced episode, a very strong episode, and it, re it did well to follow up on the backdrop of the last episode which was in my opinion the best episode of Dragon Ball Super thus far anyway guys that's been my raw review for episode 61 make sure to give us a like share comment and subscribe you may now exit Dimsy's domain thank you and goodbye